Hi all, welcome to Salesforce in 5 minutes. In this video, we are going to discuss about the interview questions that I have mentioned in my previous short. But before getting started, if you like my videos, I request you to please subscribe to this channel. So now, the first thing comes is, first question is that, let's say you have made some changes to the approval process. Okay, I'm going to zoom in. So let's say what you have done is you have made some changes to the approval process that when the record is approved then the email must be sent to the approver. So I have one more approval process available with me which is on the leave object. So if I open it. Okay this is just a basic approval process and once the record is approved what I have done is I have added an email alert right. So what's going to happen is as soon as the record will be uh, let's say uh, approved so what I'm going to do is I'm going to send an email alert to the end user. Okay. So that's what we are going to do. Now, if I want to deploy this to some another package. Okay. So if I want to deploy it to some another environment, uh, so how do I do it? Okay. Uh, I will pause for a second. You can answer this question in the comment section. What do you think you will deploy? So, uh, so let's say this is an approval process that I have. What I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all retrieve the overall approval process, right? So I should get the email alert and everything, like right? the field update, email alert, everything I should be able to get. Okay. So I've created already created a package.xml for the approval process. Now, in order to retrieve this particular approval process, from I have uh, logged in inside the workbench. Inside this workbench, I'm going to inside this over here, I'm going to choose file and select the package.xml that I have. But before that, what I need to do is I need to define from which object it is. It is on leave object, right? So in order to get that particular approval process, I can I need leave underscore underscore C dot whatever the name of the approval process is. So the name of my approval process is test. So for this object. So first I'm going to retrieve this approval process. I've selected the package and then I'm going to retrieve it. Okay, I've retrieved this particular approval process. So let's see how it looks like. Right, so I have this approval process available with me. Now I've retrieved it. So this is my approval process, right? If you can see, initial submission action, everything has been mentioned. It is active and the allow submitter is owner and everything, right? Everything has been mentioned. Even the entry criteria has mentioned the final approval actions. That is, in our case, it would be the email alert. In our case, the final approval action is email alert and the update of the field. So as you can see, uh, we can see that uh, there is one email alert and there is also the update of the field. So let's say what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this email alert, right? I'm going to edit this email alert and I'm going to select uh, right now. It's selected uh, the appointment for an authentication crime, something like that is selected as an email template. So I'm going to go and select something else instead of this. I'm going to select something else, support case response and let's save it. Now, if I want to retrieve, I want to deploy this thing again, I'm going to retrieve this same uh, approval process. And let's see what difference do I get in approval process. Do I get any difference or do I not get any difference? Let's let's extract it over here. Okay, so this is the recently uh, got approval process that I've got. Let's see if I've made the changes to this uh, what we call the email alert. 
there should be certain kind of a difference right so if you can see the final approval actions this is one of the action email alert and this is again the same action so basically even though if i change this uh, action right if i even if i have changed the uh, email that i'm going to send still there is no difference at all so how are you going to deploy these changes now in order to do that what you need to do is instead of deploying the approval process you need to deploy that particular email template okay to deploy that email template you can use workflow alert you can use this you can retrieve that particular workflow alert and then you can deploy that particular workflow alert Let's move on to the next question. What is probabilistic and deterministic encryption in Salesforce? So first of all, let's understanding let's understand basic encryption. So encryption is nothing but encryption is the probabilistic or either deterministic are nothing but a kind of an encryption to your data. What they do is basically they convert your data into a cipher text. So let's take an example of a lead source field, right? So in a lead object, I'm talking lead source fields uh, source fees as an example okay so and let's say an encryption has been enabled for this field in error so what's going to happen is that the data stored inside this field will be stored in the form of cipher text and not in a normal way the now the difference between a probabilistic or an deterministic encryption is that you cannot filter the data in the case of probabilistic encryption so let's consider the same example of our lead right that i've mentioned in this uh, screen uh, that the source will let's say it's encrypted using probabilistic encryption so if you are going to run a query based on this field for an example let's say i'm going to get a select id from lead where lead source equals to whatever it might be test whatever it might be right in case of probabilistic encryption it's not going to return anything because why the reason is because the lead source has been encrypted as it's encrypted Salesforce is not able to find the data related to that, right? So as it's in encrypted, it's not going to return anything at all. So that's what the probabilistic encryption is. But on the other hand, and deterministic in case of deterministic encryption, it solves the problem uh, of this filtering, right? So uh, to fix the problem of this filtering, you can use deterministic encryption. So using de deterministic encryption, you can get the encrypted data, and also you can uh, you will be able to use the functionality of uh, filtering. Uh, using the deterministic encryption so basically let's say if you are running the same query in the case of deterministic encryption you will be able to get the data even though the lead source uh, field has been encrypted using deterministic encryption so it's going to work perfectly fine in the case of deterministic encryption uh, and in case of probabilistic encryption it's not going to filter any data so this is the basic difference between them and both of them stores the data in the form of ciphertext so this is this is probabilistic and deterministic encryption in salesforce let's move to the next question so can we run the flow in user or system mode and if yes how and if no why not so let's move to any flow that we have in our org So I have this flow available right now. I think so. Screen flow, yeah. So this is a screen flow. Let's check whether we can run this particular flow in a user or system context or not. Okay. To run this flow in system or user context, you can just go to the setup, show advanced, and here you can see how to run the flow, user context or system context. So you can select whether you want to run this particular flow for a particular user context or either system context so answer is yes you can uh, run the flow in a system or user context and to in order to do that what you need to do is you need to click on the setup icon of your flow go to the show advanced and here you can run using how to run the flow you can select uh, in which type you have to run like a user context or a system context with sharing or system context without sharing so this is how you run the flow uh, using system or user context in salesforce if you found this video helpful, I request you to please subscribe to this channel.